What if I told you that you can take multiple PDF documents, research papers, reports, manuals, anything, upload them all at once, and just in a few minutes, transform them into a comprehensive newsletter and a podcast episode completely automatically? Well, that's exactly what I'm about to show you today. Welcome to Tech Review, where we break down the biggest stories in technology. I'm your host, Pat. Today, we're joined by technology analyst Kelly to discuss NVIDIA's remarkable transformation from a graphics card company to an AI powerhouse. Kelly, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Pat. Excited to dive into NVIDIA's journey. So let's look at how this works. Let's start with a demo. I'm in NA10 and I'm going to execute workflow. It's going to bring up a NA10 form that I can choose which PDF files I'm interested in analyzing. I will select four PDF that represents the last four quarters of NVIDIA's quarterly presentations. So I'll select deep research, and then I'll go ahead and submit. So the files are uploaded to the workflow and it's going to start executing this workflow. About 10 minutes later, we have this workflow complete and an email is sent that has all the details of the deep research and includes the podcast. Welcome to Tech Review, where we break down the biggest. So let's understand how this automation works step by step. So we're going to take a high level walkthrough first, and then we'll go node by node. So the application has three sections. There is the PDF processing section, which is responsible for taking the PDFs and then processing them so that it can be used within the research pipeline. The AI research pipeline is the second section where a research leader will break down the PDFs, understand the contents of it, and provide a table of contents that the project planner will then go and uh, provide more detailed instructions for each of the research assistants to do research on each of the sections. And then the output and delivery, this section is where we combine all the inputs and an editor puts everything together, and then we put that into a PDF format, create the podcast, and then we send the email. Now, the services that we'll be using for this is Mistral OCR. This is what we're using for the document Q&A. We're also going to be using uh, something called uh, PDF2 Podcasts from NVIDIA. So this is uh, a service that is provided in replicate.com. And then we'll also be using a PDF uh, service called pdf.co so that we can process PDFs. And then the large language model we'll be using is the uh, XAI's Grok 4 Fast, which has a really good combination of performance and price. Before we do a node by node walkthrough, let me show you the infrastructure set up with Hostinger, who I'm proud to be partnering with. I chose them because their platform is specifically suited for AI automation projects like this. Let me show you their KVM2 plan. This is exactly what I'm using. For the price, you get dedicated resources and full root access. But the real game changer, by self-hosting, you can run unlimited AI agents and unlimited executions. No monthly limits, no usage caps. What I love about this setup is the one-click NA10 installation with Q mode enabled. Plus, you get free weekly backups automatically. Setting this up is super straightforward. I'll just add the KVM2 plan into the cart. And here's the best part. I've got an exclusive discount for you. Just use Derek and the coupon code and get additional 10% savings on yearly plans. Here's how easy it is to access NADN after purchase. We'll select a free malware scanner, create a root password, continue, finish setup. After a few moments, it's building your N10 machine. Now your N10 machine is ready. We're going to manage the VPS, go to the dashboard, and then select Manage App. And there you go. Your N10 instance is ready. All right, so let's walk through this workflow now uh, node by node. So the first thing we're going to do is have a on-form submission. So we'll click that node. So this node uh, will allow us to get the PDFs that we want for our podcast and deep research. So we have a form title, and then we have uh, the PDF file fields. I have uh, multiple files, and it accepts PDF types. And then we have here the ability to uh, configure uh, the research depth. So, so I've configured uh, two depths. There's a deep research, which is about uh, 3,500 to 4,000 words. That's about uh, 
10 to uh, 13 uh, PDF pages. And then uh, the newsletter is uh, about half of that length. And then uh, we can have some additional instructions if we want to tell the large language model to uh, process in a certain way. So we have an option to do that. So after this note, what we do is uh, put in a code note. So this is uh, a small piece of code that uh, was generated uh, by Claude, which allows me to uh, process this binary in a way that uh, allows me to uh, have this uh, file name to be consistent uh, as I loop through the upload. So this is just some, some boilerplate uh, processing. And then so the next is um, Mistral upload. So what I'm going to do in this um, in, in this section here is to upload all the uh, files uh, that uh, the user has uh, uh, specified and then put that into a URL that Mistral OCR can understand. So uh, this is uh, a API through the Mistral OCR. So in here, uh, it's, it's just HTTP node that uh, has the Mistral Cloud Good credentials. And there's some uh, parameters in here that are specified through the API. And then I process um, all the uploads. So in this case, I've uploaded four items, and then I'm uh, using this service to upload that into a URL that can then be signed once again by the Mistral uh, URL, uh, Mistral uh, service, and this is providing a URL that uh, can be used for the service. Now, after I've uploaded and signed uh, each of the PDFs, I'm going to uh, collect the PDF so that it's all uh, within uh, one. Uh, one element called uh, PDF uh, URLs. So this just combines all of the uh, four uploads into one uh, one element here. And then I'm going to do some processing here. So this is a little bit uh, um, uh, detailed. So, so we'll go through this uh, in detail. So what we're doing here is uh, creating a uh, JSON body. So this JSON body is what we're going to use to uh, call the Q&A APIs for uh, Mistral. So, so what I'm doing here is creating the JSON body, which specifies the uh, model that we're going to use for the OCR. And then in here, I'm going to create uh, the the message content. So I'm, I'm telling it that you're an assistant that specializes answering questions accurately from a document. If the data is not in the document, say, I don't uh, know, never make things up. And what I'm going to do here is in this uh, small piece of code here, I take all the URLs that were uploaded into the cloud, and I make it such that um, it comes out with, on the right-hand side here, you see type and document URL, type document URL. This then becomes the uh, JSON body that uh, I need to pass into the Q&A. All right, so, so let me just explain that a little bit further. So this is uh, PDF processing. And then now in the research leader, this is uh, what is driving the initial uh, understanding of all the documents. So this research leader will call this tool called Mistral PDF. So now what happens when this Mistral PDF is called? So this tool calls into this workflow, which is the tool itself. So in this workflow, we pass into a JSON body. So this JSON body is what I created in the code node. So this code node created this, um, this JSON uh, object that has um, all the document URLs that I uploaded and it's expanded to uh, all four documents here. So if it was eight, it'll have eight entries in here. And then uh, I pass it in also a uh, query string. This is what the uh, AI agent is going to be asking this Q&A uh, service, All right? So we take that and then we pass that information into uh, the Mistral. So this is the endpoint for the Mistral uh, API that implements the Q&A, and we pass into it the JSON body that uh, we we just just uh, uh, talked about, and then after it's complete, it returns a response. All right, so now this is the research leader that's using the tool, and the research leader is essentially uh, going to be using this uh, Mr. Q&A, and it's going to query the Q&A for the knowledge base, and then it's going to work through the details and come out with some research insights and then propose a table of contents. So it's going to iterate through this tool, asking the PDF questions and then coming up with a, uh, a, a table of contents. Now this project planner will also have access to uh, the knowledge base and it's going to take the next level of detail, right? So it's going to take the uh, specific, uh, 
the specific table of contents, and it's going to create the prompts uh, to uh, the research agents uh, to go to the next level of detail. Now, this part here is where I, I uh, determine uh, how many research agents are needed. So if it's a deep research, then I use eight chapters or eight agents. And then if it's newsletter, then it's only going to be four agents. So this helps me control the, the length of the report. So the, the powerful thing about this is that this could be 12 chapters or this could be six chapters. And then you can have the length of the report also expand or contract depending on, on that setting. All right, next we uh, delegate to the team of research assistants. So this splits into uh, eight different uh, research assistants. So let's go into the prompt here. So essentially uh, this uh, research assistant will get a prompt from uh, the uh, project planner and each of the assistants will have their own prompt. So in this case here, we go back here, there's a set of prompts that have been uh, divided by the, uh, the, the delegation here. And then each of the research assistants will then uh, query the knowledge base. And this knowledge base here will call into this tool and uh, query the uh, four PDF documents for the research. Now we're going to move into the output and delivery section. So in this section, we take all the information from the research assistants and we consolidate that into uh, one, uh, one report here. And the editor is simply going to do some light editing and uh, transform the output into uh, HTML format. So the prompt is here. Uh, it's not an uh, elaborate prompt. It's essentially just uh, to put everything together and make sure that uh, grammar, spelling, and punctuation errors, anything of that nature is get, gets addressed here. And then after we uh, consolidate everything in the editor, then we create a title. And now what we're going to use is this PDF Co. Uh, service. So this is a community node. So if you uh, go into here and go PDF Co, you'll have to install that. All right. So this is a verified community node. So you, you install this. And this will give you the ability to uh, take the HTML and convert that into PDF. So that's what that node does. And then the reason why we're doing that is because the replicate service, the service here on replicate.com, uh, it needs a PDF as input. So we uh, take the HTT HTTP node and we uh, set this parameter here, this adjacent body to uh, pass into the service. And, and how we created this is uh, if we go back to replicate.com and this uh, NVIDIA uh, PDF to podcast, there is an API section here and you can go into HTTP and then grab this, copy that and go back to here. And then you do an impart curl and then this, if you paste that into here, then it will fill in the different parameters, right? So we fill in the different parameters, and then we specify in the PDF, the PDF URL from pdf.co, and then send this over. So this will take about uh, two minutes to generate, and then this waits uh, for it to finish. And then once it's finished, what we do is we uh, get from the URL that it, it finishes, it, we, we get uh, uh, where to the URL to download, so this, uh, this here is just a HTTP uh, node. And then we, we get, uh, get the info from, from here. And then we download that uh, information. So in this case, we just go ahead and download the, uh, from the, the URL and we get the, uh, we get the MP3. And then we send that over to our Gmail node, right? So that's end-to-end uh, -end how uh, this works.